The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, welcome to today's webinar. We will be going over Facebook ads this morning. Thank you for joining. And um, we'll start out with kind of going over an overview of what the marketing department has to offer here. If you have any questions at all during the webinar, um, just put it through and I'll answer at the end. So start off with, um, these are all the services that our creative department provides, uh, mainly turnkey solutions, agency solutions, and digital solutions. We'll be getting into those a little bit here to, to kick off the webinar as individuals start to roll in. Um, our turnkey solutions, very simple. Um, if you go to that link, um, you'll see our variant of offerings ready for print. We help you with the branding. With If you have a logo, um, we can help put that on there, your contact information, put your color scheme on there. That's a pretty, pretty nifty um, solution. Um, we also have these brochures, uh, for example, for you to utilize. You just need to let us know what you're interested in. And then for agency solutions, we do help with logo design. So let's say you're interested in one of those turnkey solutions, but you don't have a logo yet. We can help you design a logo, design your stationery, your business cards, your advertising, the full gambit for print advertising. Um, we can also help you develop your business name if you're not sure what direction you want to go with. If you have a securities license, we can help you out as well with our wealth management arm. We have compliant, ready materials, and we can help you out with also naming your company and kind of moving forward with that. These are some logos that we've helped and some brands that we've helped develop in the past. Um, as you can see here, it's really it's really up to you what you want. Um, there's really no limit other than your own creativity. So if you're if you're looking for something more simple, like the Wil Wilkins Financial or the Jenkins Group here, with just having one of their um, letters in the actual logo, or if you want to go for something more um, more emotional, like the Family Choice Insurance logo, or something that's more pertaining to your area with the Funk Financial. Um, it just really depends on what you're looking for for your brand and how far we can take your idea. So these are some examples of the business cards that we've uh, provided for agents. Business cards are can be some of the most difficult to design um, just because it's your your touching point. It's it's an elevated pitch that can essentially travel with whoever you have met with. So we definitely take a little bit extra time on these and we can help you through the print process as well of what vendors choose and, and our team is fantastic with that. For digital solutions, we can provide anywhere from completely designing your website to getting super granular with the drip email marketing campaign. Um, if you have any questions on any of those, shoot me an email at josh at imsinc.com and I can sk either schedule a time if necessary or I can send you more information on our website services or for social media consulting, whatever have you. If you want to run some Google ads or if there's an online newspaper that you would like to have you or your company featured in, just let us know and we can definitely help you through that process of developing that. And lastly, um, I wanted to touch base on this quickly before we get into the to the bulk of the of the presentation here. This is our Life and Annuity Academy. It's a wonderful event, all expense paid. It's fantastic. It's in Des Moines, the next one, and then we also have another one at our home office in Omaha. Um, it looks like the dates here are incorrect. So um, we have various ones in 2018 that are ready to go. Um, so I'm going to run a poll here quick. Just if you have any interest, just let me know, and I can have one of our fantastic marketers um, reach out to you. 
again, this is an all expense paid trip. It is um, fantastic. You'll hear from industry experts. Um, you can also hear from us uh, directly, the digital um, or creative department at the local Omaha office where we can help you to sit down and talk with you directly from um, your marketing efforts um, to talk through your branding, what direction you want to go to um, any questions you might have of social media advertising, email advertising, or anything like that. We can definitely set aside, set aside time for that. Thank you for voting, and we'll get into the bulk of the presentation. So today we're going to be talking about Facebook ads and essentially tips and tricks, but we'll highlight those throughout. Um, I'll give a little walkthrough of um, what we're going to be going through here. So we'll start off with what Facebook ads can do for you, why they're important, what kind of benefits they may have. We'll go through if Facebook ads are right for your particular business. They're definitely not key for all businesses, but they can do enormous help for businesses that um, can utilize them correctly. I'll show how to set up an advertisement campaign easily. I'll go through how to boost a uh, a social media post as well as I'll give a brief overview of the Facebook ads manager and then I'll show um, and go through a little bit on how to correctly utilize Facebook ads for your seminar so that you can kind of save some save some change and not just utilize mailers for your seminar invites um, it's mailers are definitely still useful but they can be a little bit expensive and a little bit time consuming on your end. So with Facebook ads, it kind of takes that out of the equation. It might take a little bit more mental effort on your end, um, but it definitely definitely is a more cost efficient approach and more time efficient as well. So let's get started with what Facebook ads can do for you. So first, you can really target your audience. You can get down to minute details of if they're a homeowner, what zip code they're in, their age bracket, if they're male, female, if they like to go fishing. It, it just depends on how specific you really want to get. And Facebook will show you how many individuals you have targeted with your specific demographics. So like let's say you get super specific in a very small zip code, it will warn you that, hey, you're only targeting 5,000 people, you need to be targeting more people. So it will give you a, a notice if you're getting too specific, um, but in general, it's a fantastic way to kind of get, a, get around sending out um, mailers or just broadcasting your message to people that might not even be qualified. You can get real-time results and analytics. The moment you press um, send or approve on your ad. You can see individuals looking at it, um, how it's performing, what is it doing, what people are clicking on, how many people have seen it, how many people have it, has it gone out, out to. Um, and if you pick a specific time period, it will send over that time period. So if you invest $100 over a week, it will spend that $100 throughout the week. Um, so it's it's, and you can see exactly what's going on with your ad, so you can make tweaks. Um, one fantastic thing is you can have uh, different call to actions in your ads. So if you want individuals to go to your website, or if you want them to give you a direct message through Facebook Messenger, if you want them to call your phone, um, there's various different ways that you can have individuals contact you through the ad, and I'll be going over that in the future of this presentation of exactly what you can do. And you can test your ads, and if an ad is not doing particularly well, you can change your ads. Um, let's say that a photo in your ad, you were kind of iffy about it, um, you can hold off on using that image in your ad and then right before your ad is finished going through everything you can actually just swap out the image in the ad quick and it's pretty easy you can change the messaging you can see what's going on you can compare 
uh, two ads against each other, you can kind of have a have a face off so that you can um, really find out what is working for your particular ads. You can also, along with that, with the call to action and changing your ads, you can direct your prospect exactly where you want them to go. So one thing that kind of has been a, kind of a handicap of print advertising since the beginning of newspapers and magazines and all that fun stuff, your, your ad will go to a large population, no doubt. But if you have, like, let's say your website on that ad, um, it's very difficult for individuals to make the transition. So if I am reading a newspaper and I see a URL for a company, um, I have to pull up my phone and then manually type in the URL. Well, for Facebook ads, I'm already on my phone, and all I have to do is click, and I'm already where exactly you want me to go. So it's very, very easy. Um, it's essentially, sometimes, even the forms that you send individuals to, if you want them to download a white paper or something like that, it will already have everything pre-filled in because of their a Google account or something like that. So it makes it very easy where it could just be two clicks and I'm already sending you my information and you have a new lead and you didn't really have to do much. Um, so now let's get into if Facebook ads are right for your business. So first, do you have a digital footprint? If you're not online at all, if you don't like the internet, if you think that it's a complete waste of time, maybe it's not the best for you. It, if you have a website, you need to be using Facebook ads. If you don't have a website, you can still utilize Facebook ads, but it's not going to be as effective or impactful as you could. And you can also um, build your whole, your whole essentially digital footprint from your Facebook page, um, but it's going to take a little bit more effort on um, on your end to really get that audience built up. If you're on a tight budget, Facebook ads are fantastic for you. Um, there's there's really any amount that you can invest in it. I think the minimum that you can do in a time period is like a day is like five bucks. Um, but what I kind of suggest for for agents or for any small business is that you invest fifty dollars a day for a month and see how that goes. Um, or even $50 a week if you're on a little bit tighter budget. So then you're putting between 200 and 1,000 bucks a month on Facebook ads. And compare that to your mailer and how many people you'll reach with that. Um, with 100 bucks, you can reach upwards of 3,000 individuals. So um, depending on your demographics and all that fun stuff. So it really, it's really key for the tight budget. Um, and one thing to go with that budget is that your demographics can be very specific. So if I, if I put an ad in, we're in Omaha here, and so if I put an ad in the Omaha World Herald, my uh, business will be broadcasted to a lot of people. It'll be fantastic, but there will also be individuals that read that ad that have no idea what uh, an insurance agent does, or they might not even care, or they might be completely off basis of who your demographic is anyways. So with Facebook ads, you can get very specific, and you can make sure that whoever sees your ad, you have a high probability of them actually interacting with your ad. And you can tell a story with your enticing CTA. If you can make it so that your ad is engaging enough that your audience or your potential lead would click on it, then Facebook ads are right for you. If you're not very good at telling a story, um, which you should be in this industry, um, then you probably will not have success on Facebook. Um, you need to be able to capture somebody's attention and have that be enticing enough to have them take action. If um, you just continuously post your phone number, chances are you're not going to get much out of that. Individuals rarely will will call from a Facebook ad. Sometimes you'll get 
lucky and somebody will call in after you spend a couple hundred bucks. But that would be an individual that's really interested and they would have probably given you their lead information anyways before that point. Um, so it's if if you can tell a story and it's it's not a I'm not saying don't ever put your phone number on your Facebook ads. Just don't have it every single time. You need to be able to build off your ads as individuals see your branding more. So let's get into how to set up an advertising campaign. And I'll kind of go through the, the easier way of doing it to start off with. And then I'll get into the more complicated Facebook ads manager in a little bit. But um, this is... Uh, Facebook page is our Facebook page. I'm logged in here, so I have admin access just like you would if you logged into your own Facebook page. And what you do to just start off an ad is, if you see at the bottom left there, write a post. Um, so if we click on that, um, it kind of pulls up the screen. And as I mentioned earlier, these are all the options that you can have for a different uh, call to action in this particular instance. Um, you can have a photo, video, you can check in your location if you're at an industry event or you're at your office or something like that. You can take a sponsor if you're at an industry event and there's a sponsor. Um, you can do or uh, try to get calls. Um, you can create an event like a seminar or something like that. You can do a poll and then you can read the rest. Um, so. To get started, all you need to do is either start writing your post or click on one of those instances. So, yeah, those are the various options they can have for it. And then once you put in your info, for this example, I did click on uh, Get Calls. So it kind of pulled our website, and luckily we're kind of, we're kind of focused on um, being available for our agents so it kind of pulled our cover photo which already wonderfully has our phone number and things on it but you can customize the image to whatever you would like you can put in your own custom um, wording and then if you notice um, it did give us an option to boost the post once we actually selected everything so when you click on that um, to boost the post it will bring up this menu which is essentially um, a simplified ads manager. So you can see on the side, on the left, you can get into your demographics for your target, you can get into your budget. Um, it will tell you your estimated reach on who this particular ad would impact. And you can also pick how many days it goes over and uh, what kind of payment you would do. So that's a very specific um, really quick um, way of getting to the ad manager. Um, you can also, if you already have a post that's already out there, um, you can also boost an already written post. Here is our um, I'm's Bracket Buster Contest post. Um, it's not boosted. As you can see, um, it only reached 38 people. Um, and that's, that's a normal thing for businesses nowadays. If you don't boost a post, Facebook just will not really get it out there, even to your own audience. Um, it's it's pretty rare that um, your post will see more than 100 people, unless it is extremely engaging and hits at the exact right time and people start sharing it and it essentially goes viral, which as many of you know that have done Facebook for a while, it's extremely hard to do that. Um, so one thing that you can do that's really easy is boost the post. It's right there. It's ready to go if you're logged in and an admin and it will bring up a preview for you. It will tell you just like before, um, your size of audience, your budget. Um, it will give you an estimate on how many people you'll be able to reach and, yeah, so if you have any questions on this, um, we we can help you a lot on this end of things. It's very simple, very easy to do it like this, and and uh, there will be a recording made of this at the end. Um, probably it'll probably go up around noon today, but um, it's very simple to have um, this type of 
of ad. So I'll move on to um, the, fa the Facebook Ads Manager. Um, this is I'm just going to do a, a quick overview because you can get pretty granular with this. Um, as you can see here, you can choose various marketing objectives from just brand awareness where you're not really looking for people to specifically interact with your ads or you're just looking for maybe a, a like campaign. Maybe, maybe you did a rebrand um, with us and individuals in your area, let's say that you're in Houston, um, they don't really know your brand. They don't know your, who you are. They don't know um, anything about your business or what you do. Well, maybe you just need to do some brand awareness where you start to get in front of people's faces. Now, one word of caution with this is there is a chance that you won't get anything from that type of campaign in terms of monetary or, or somebody um, being like, hey, I want your business. A lot of times it will take three to seven times of somebody seeing your messaging before they would even think about interacting with it. So, and that goes for any sphere of influence from magazine to talking with them to word of mouth. It just, it just takes a while for individuals to get comfortable with your specific um, company these days. And then moving on, you can do some others where you direct traffic, you try to get engagements. Um, I kind of, I doubt that any of you have personal apps, but you can try to get app installs. Um, video previews, lead generation, and uh, moving on to that conversions is more for individuals that actually sell monetary items like a coffee shop or a clothing store or something like that. So it really depends on on what you're looking for in your in your advertising campaign. If you want individuals to kind of learn more about you, or if you want them to specifically go to your website and fill out a form. So this is kind of a more complicated demographic um, audience chooser. So you can see on the right hand side of the screen, it will give you a potential reach number. Right now it's just in the United States, 230 million people. So this would go out to everybody, um, but you can get very granular in this. You can narrow down to specific zip codes, um, even what type of language they speak. Um, so, and then moving on to actually creating the ad, you can do a various amount of ad um, kind of formats where you can do carousels, single image, a video, a slideshow, a collection of images. Usually, at least for um, at least for seminar invites, we kind of stick to the single image, and I'll get into an example of that in a little bit. And then this is kind of a, a mock-up of our single premium live university. This would be an ad that we would run specifically for that. And then one nice thing about Facebook ads is that you can link them to your website so that you can actually see where the traffic is coming from. So this is linked up to our Single Premium Life University landing page so that it would let us know, okay, this is where these prospects came from, where these agents came from to the ad to learn more about um, Single Premium Life. And you can change anything in the ad from the copy to the link preview and even the sign up button. Um, you can change a lot in these, and it will give you previews of the desktop feed, the mobile feed, the uh, sidebar ad. Um, so it's it's a really nice tool that Facebook made, and they they do give some improvements and changes every once in a while. So um, if you need any help with this specifically, this is a little bit more complicated than just the boosting post option that I showed earlier, but it's it's very valuable and. Uh, if you're if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of Facebook ads this is where you would go so let's get on, on to utilizing Facebook ads for your seminars as many of you know um, mailer campaigns for seminars or other events or just promoting your business can be pretty expensive from the design process to printing to actually mailing it out to seeing little return 
it can end up being a very expensive process. And sometimes it's all worth it if just one individual comes out of a miller of 5,000. Um, but what if we could do that exact same thing, but at the fraction of cost where we're not spending $2,500 or $5,000 on a mailer campaign, but instead we spend between $100 and $1,000 on a Facebook ad campaign. So how do we do that? Well, first, we need to plan ahead. Just like mailers, um, you need to send them out you know, a week or two, three weeks. I prefer to have a month before just so that we can re-engage with individuals multiple times so that they see the ad more than once. And then test your ads before that as well. So like let's say we have a budget of $500 um, to run on Facebook ads. Well, let's take 100 of those dollars and run a test ad or a comparison to see what exactly our messaging is doing, what the image is doing, so that we can correct it before we start investing more, um, more resources into that ad as we get closer to the seminar. And then utilize local zip code demographics. I like to use uh, city-data.com, city-data.com, um, to use to kind of find out what is going on in a specific area. Um, I recently helped out an agent choose their demographics on their seminar ad, and we found out just from looking at the demographics that in the heart of the downtown area of where he was, it's extremely poor. Um, so we, we decided to not run it in that area, and we decided to kind of run the ad closer to where his seminar was located, and then also on the opposite side of town where there was a high income area um, that we did see some traction from as well. Um, so we kind of almost, it almost looked like a donut of what our demographic area looked like just because we avoided the middle of the city where um, there was a lot of um, poverty. So it just really depends on, on what you're looking for and, and who your target audience is. Maybe, maybe that audience is perfect for your demographic, but in this instance, for this particular agent, it wasn't. So we, we avoided it and we made adjustments to make it so that we could reach the amount of people that we wanted to. And then you need to customize your messaging for your audience. I'll show this in a little bit, um, but you can, let's say that you are wanting only um, female attendees. Well, we can change the, the image for that. And if, like, let's say we try that image, but then you were hoping to get more of a balanced demographic of male and female, well, then we can, we can switch it halfway through as well and try to get more male attendees. But it really, it really depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish. And then utilize a compelling landing page service. We have moved to using Eventbrite. Um, that's a very good service. It's, it's free um, for up to 50 attendees, I believe. So if, I, I don't know of many agents that um, have more than 50 registrants for their, for their seminars regularly, um, but they do cap out at 50 registrants and you can capture their name, their address, their email, their phone number, however much information you would wanna try. Um, I would suggest against trying to get everything from these um, individuals as that sometimes scares away people from actually registering for your event. Um, if I have no idea who you are as an agent and I see your ad for an event and I go to register for it because I am interested and you ask for my um, first last name, okay. My email, okay, I'll give that to you. My phone number, okay, I'll give that to you, I guess. My address, uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with giving that to somebody that I have no idea who they are. So um, keep that in mind when you're setting up your landing page for your seminar service. So this is kind of an example of what an agent has done previously. Um, it looks like it this did not render correctly. But, um, so if you, here I'll, uh, maybe I can fix this quick. If you kind of look at the ad, it's very good um, messaging. Um, you have your, 
your offer, your cash offering. You have your your location. You have your um, your date, your time, your your registration um, place. You have your your call to action with the learn more, um, and it's it's a it's a fantastic way of getting your um, your ad kind of out there. And then if you are interested in targeting just a female audience, there that registered or that rendered correctly, um, this is an example of that um, where you have this this uh, kind of elderly woman looking like she has a question for um, the the agent at the seminar and you can um, kind of play around with the imagery on these to get it to fit your audience specifically. Um, this could be also an elderly man or a couple or um, if you're looking to kind of reach on the wealth management side to get those younger um, individuals that maybe they're looking to combine their 401ks or something like that. Um, you could have that type of individual as well or if it's you're specifically looking at families for life insurance maybe you have a small family playing outside or something like that so it really depends on what you're looking for um, to get specific with your um, imagery this is an example of of a landing page we use Eventbrite for this specific example um, as you can see you can have similar imagery to your Facebook ad which is actually very important so that like let's say you have one image on your Facebook ad and then they go to the landing page and it's completely different it looks completely different there's not any similarities they could get confused and um, wonder where the heck it took them and then get kind of almost scared because you know, individuals are getting a little bit more hesitant with um, the internet nowadays with all the hacking that has been going on and and stuff like that so people want to protect their information more and more so it's it's key to make it more comfortable on the landing page as you go so that these individuals will actually submit their information so as you can see we use a similar ad to the previous um, or similar image to the previous ad we kept with the same theme and styling with the learn strategies to maximize your social security income with a little upward trending arrow there with the blue and the green and um, so they all they have to do is select a date and then they're good to go um, so that's that's kind of a quick rundown of how you would utilize Facebook ads for your seminar invite and this landing page that you're looking at it, it looks pretty nice but it was actually free so that's one of the keys um, to this is that it's very cost efficient and um, to kind of give an example of how successful these ads can be um, this past weekend we ran one for one of our agents um, and he had a budget of three hundred dollars but it was uh, eighty six dollars was spent this previous weekend and over the weekend we had um, it went out to the ad went out to 25 around 2,500 unique individuals, and each one of those individuals saw the ad around two times. Um, we got around 77 unique clicks onto the ad. Um, it captured their name, their email, and phone number when they actually submitted, and we had a total of eight registrants uh, from seven different households. So um, the agent will now be following up probably with a phone number um, with a nice call to those eight registrants, well, mainly those seven households, to find out if the date works, if they have any questions, um, if they have any thoughts. Um, so, and that was all done for you know, 86 bucks. So if you extrapolate that, you know, hopefully we can get um, around 20 registrants um, when his ad is completely filled and done. But, it's it's really key to hit on the weekends um, earlier um, so his seminar I believe is next week so we'll hit again this upcoming weekend um, but it, it could be too late as people already have plans and 
um, it's just it's just nice to give a little bit of heads up to individuals. So we like to we like to aim to schedule ads a little bit earlier, but sometimes if you're in a time crunch, this can be a very good way of going at it. Um, so we'll do some questions right now. Um, there's my contact information. If you have any any questions afterwards um, that we don't touch on, let me know. Um, you can email me. You can give me a call. Um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, it really depends on what you're comfortable with on that side of things. And yeah, don't don't be afraid to give us a call sometime. Um, so here is one question: How how do you do a creative design of the ad? Is there a place or a website to design this? Do we really need to have a Facebook business page to do this? Um, it's ideal to have a Facebook business page. Um, I don't think you can run an ad without having a Facebook business page. You cannot run an ad from your personal Facebook account. Um, Facebook doesn't allow that. They like to have a unique individual being an owner of the Facebook business page. Um, so you do need a fa personal Facebook account to be able to make a business page. And you do need a business page to be able to run an ad. Um, where do we, is there, is there a place for um, development of an ad? Um, there might be some, some, um, there, there are some websites that have kind of tools to help you make a Facebook image, but in terms of actually designing the ad, um, you kind of do that all through the Facebook ads manager. Um, it, yeah, if you want uh, personal help with your Facebook ad campaign, just uh, give me an email, uh, sh shoot me a call, and we can kind of work through that. Um, our address is, uh, you can find our address on our website. Um, let's see here. So the web address for the zip code demographics that I use city-data.com. Um, there's uh, various other website sources available. Just go on Google and search for zip code demographics and I bet you'll find something that will help you out there. Are agents having success generating leads for med subs using Facebook? Um, also, do video ads work better for generating leads versus photos? Video ads do work. Um, they do work incredibly well. Um, it just takes a little bit of time and effort and a little bit more investment into um, making the ad. So that really uh, depends on where you're at. Med subs definitely do work on Facebook generally needs for med subs. It just depends on if you can narrow down the demographics. So if we're in Omaha and we just do a med sub ad for the Omaha area for individuals between, I don't know, 55 and 67 or something like that, we might get some hits, but it really, like if we can hit a zip code that we know specifically has individuals that live in a community, of like-mindedness that would need med subs, like that would be incredible. So it just it just really depends on how granular you can get your demographic. Um, what is the difference between a business page and a fan page? So um, a fan page, you can make a fan page of yourself, and essentially um, it's just for people liking it and subscribing to your updates and things like that. A business page is a little bit different in terms of it's made for more interaction and for you to provide more um, more information about your business. I've seen some agents, they make a fan page and then they have difficulties with actually making it different than their business. Um, so it really depends if you are looking to promote yourself or your business as um, that's kind of that's kind of really the difference between a fan page and a business page a fan page is more for like i don't know somebody like um denzel washington while a business page would be something more like for um something something wealth management so can i add a facebook ad link to print advertising to easily direct them to my facebook yes you can 
um, that is perfectly um, done. Um, that's a great idea to have your Facebook ad, to have links to your website, to have anything you have available on your print marketing, just in case somebody has um, a question. Um, there, to be honest, you may not see much flow, traffic flow coming from that, but it is a great idea to have it on there just in case so that if somebody has your business card, they can see, oh, this guy is on Facebook, this guy is on LinkedIn. Um, so that is definitely a great idea. And then I'll take one last question here. Can I add Facebook ad, or how do you link a landing page to your Facebook ad? So. Um, this is pretty simple process where really all you have to do is take the link for your landing page and input it, excuse me, input it into your Facebook status or your ad. Um, it's it, Facebook will automatically pull the information from that landing page, including a photo, if there's a photo um, on that landing page. And um, it's, it's a very easy process of Facebook, it's built to direct people outside of the platform. So um, it'll pull everything in there, and um, you really don't have to have to worry about much for for that. Um, it looks like that's that's all the questions we have for now. Um, if you have any additional questions, uh, give me shoot me an email or give me a call or. You know, my LinkedIn's right there, so um, you can add me as a contact, message me at any time, and I'll try to get back to you within the hour. Um, and um, thanks for joining. Have a great day. Uh, stay warm out there. Hopefully the, the weather's pretty nice. And, again, if you have any questions, um, we're here to help, and we're here to help your business grow. Thank you.